As an entrepreneur, uh, oftentimes I am asked, what is to be an entrepreneur? And I usually say, you don't need to be a VIP, you need to be a VP. You have to have vision, a good idea, but it's not enough. You have to be brilliant in the execution because there is a lot of smart people in the world. And second, you have to believe in what you do. You have to have the passion to hold on because it's not an easy path. So our passion and our vision at Neuroelectrics, we have been obsessed with the brain, trying to, now that you're listening to me, and I hope that even if I'm the last speaker you're listening to me, your brain is sending electrical signals. So we have been trying to decode those signals, to process, develop uh, new algorithms to understand what's going on in the brain. But then we ask ourselves, what about if on top of listening to the brain, we can interfere with the brain? So this is uh, how we come uh, to the technology that I'm going to show to you right now. And of course, the, first, uh, the best way to show a technology is uh, to wear it. So uh, I'm going to put this neoprene medically graded 1020 system cap on. As you can see, it's wireless, it's connecting to my laptop, can be connecting um, to the cloud. And this is a, a nice one, eh? watch out, I'm, I'm skipping. So it comes with different sizes. Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> this is actually a kit size. We were using this um, in hospitals and they were calling this the Mickey Mouse cap to engage uh, children in the treatment. So we decided to actually make these Mickey Mouse ears. So I'm going to leave ET. I mean, in case aliens come to Earth one day, we can also have another line of business. So I'm going to show you now if technology allows me to. Um, what you're seeing now, if I, if I move my head, you see the accelerometer um, data moving, meaning that if the doctor prescribes you home use, you shouldn't be washing the dishes. What you can see here is a real-time representation of my brain signals over the scalp the power distribution of my brain signals. And what I think is really beautiful is that I can not only diagnose, but I can use the eight electrodes I'm wearing right now to do two things. I can excite the brain, I can send electrical currents into the brain. For example, if I suffer from a stroke, I want to excite that area of the brain, or I can inhibit brain activity. For example, if a kid is to have an epileptic seizure, I'm going to want to reduce the level of activity. So I think that um, the beauty is in combining the diagnostic and the therapeutic uh, um, applications. And Adam, I think that in his talk, has already talked about these closed loop um, technologies. So our vision is that this should be taken home. Uh, we want to reach as many patients as we can and that this become a home treatment. As an entrepreneur, you have to focus. Unfortunately, everything is interesting, but we have selected two applications post rehabilitation and neuropathic pain. We are CMARC. We are starting now the FDA process in the USA. And there are many, many applications in research in depression, sleep disorders, and so on. We have selected two that I will go into a bit more of detail on. Clinically, what are we doing? You are going to see an example of this hospital in Barcelona. Uh, I, I think you guessed by my accent that I'm from Barcelona. but. Um, this hospital is using uh, brain stimulation in spinal cord injured patients. They have this neuropathic pain. So this patient is seeing a representation of her legs in movement, which is activating her motor cortex. And at the same time, we are applying these currents. They do five to 10 sessions of stimulation, depending on the case, and the effects last for two to three weeks. Um, we are starting now home treatment with this uh, particular subset of patients with very nice results. In a stroke rehabilitation, one of the beauties of electrical stimulation is that if you combine it with existing cognitive or motor therapies, you have an enhancement of the effect. So this patient suffers from a stroke and is doing some motor uh, rehabilitation in combination with our technology. On the future, on the future we see aging and gaming and the work that Adam is doing as something really, really relevant. I think that gaming is going to change the way we treat uh, our pathologies and the combination of gaming with other technologies is going to help uh, the way we are um, aging and the way our cognition functions may be uh, reduced. Another work now that we are in UK that we like a lot is about uh, learning disabilities. So we have a professor here, Wire has also featured, Roy Cohen Kadosh, uh, working with children with dyscalculia, with this uh, mathematical uh, disability, with also very nice results. So, <clears throat> 
because of this last panel, we have focused on the medical side of things, but I have to say that there is people also uh, working in investigating, as you have been seen in this panel, about how to best uh, use uh, these technologies for sports performance. So I think that's an area that we are going to see also growing in terms of uh, research um, in the future. You can see the full video at uh, Neuroelectrics. So <clears throat> to wrap up, um, I think we, our markets are the research, the clinical, and our goal is to go home. We are not there yet. Uh, at the research level, we have managed uh, last year only to sell in 35 countries. So these flags you see are actually uh, research institutes or clinics that are using our technologies. We did open an office in Boston, and I have to say that at the clinical level, we are focusing more in Europe because it's where we have uh, our certification. But we, we really aim to go from clinical to home treatment. So we feel like pioneers in understanding um, the electric brain, but we really want to take it to the home use. So we want to change the way we provide treatment to patients, and we want this vision and execution and passion that I discussed at the beginning to become a reality. So if, if you want to help us out, if you have any ideas, um, come and see us um, later. And again, uh, thanks, Wire, um, for helping us. We should have a picture, of course, of ET uh, reading Wire. <laughs> and again, uh, thanks for, for this recognition. Thank you. So do you think at any point this might become a consumer device that I can wear, use, wear in the streets and as a fashion tool that can also track my brain? Well, in fact, there are companies that are more active in the consumer market than we are, uh, both in the EEG-only monitoring, mm -hmm. you know, for meditation or other applications, and there are recent ones on stimulation. Uh, we are a bit more cautious, so we... We have a scientific background, so we like to see the data and the effects and the side effects. So we haven't uh, engaged into such a consumer until we see a bit more how the technology is being applied in the medical field. But I do believe that this is going to become uh, something that we will wear. Of course, not in this maybe manner, but it's going to affect our daily lives in ways we cannot even think of uh, right now. Okay. You work with some of the best scientists in the world in, in the field of neuromodulation, Adam, Red Bull, Roy Cohen. Which, out of that research, what was, you know, the kind of development that really surprised you, I guess, you coming from the technological side? I think that, uh, as, as I have uh, mentioned with Adam, I think that what I love is the combination of technologies. I don't think you can have, uh, you can claim that you have the golden pill. And I think that the brain is so unknown and we know so little about it that uh, there's still a lot of work to do. And by combining technologies, to me, it's one of the most uh, interesting things I think I, I have seen in the field. Okay, thank you so much. Anna Maikis. Thank you.